So we've got an architecture student with a passion for games. Uh, what should they learn to set themselves apart from the competition and where do they learn it from? So uh, someone with a particular interest, uh, how do they set themselves apart and where can they learn about that particular interest? What do you think? Yeah, specialise. So if someone's got an architecture background, then there's already possibly a relationship there with um, environment creation, like buildings and houses and models and or maybe interiors, objects, assuming that someone's, say, looking from an art perspective. If they want to be an audio engineer, then it's kind of like, well, that's a really different thing. Um, or if they want to be a programmer, that's potentially different as well. So leverage what you know already and do something similar to that and specialize, 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 specialize. When you're starting in any industry, when you're trying to get your foot in the door, when you're trying to you know, claw your way up the ladder, find something that you enjoy doing and be really, really, really good at it. And you might say, well, then that means if I'm really good at buildings. But there's all these jobs out there where people want trees and characters and cars, and I'm not so good at those. It doesn't matter. You've just got to stay the course, stay the line, and get really focused on getting really good at something. And if you get good at that, if you get to the point where like, my portfolio is really, my portfolio is really um, shiny and looking good on this, then you can expand into the next thing and then the next thing. That's an okay way to do it. But if you're just a little bit okay at a bunch of things, not so good. So if someone's going from architecture into games, game development, game design, game art, then I would say look for a nice, um, a nice overlap in their level design. Because when you turn up for an opportunity and say, I'm a level designer and I've got a background in architecture, they'd be like, ooh, that's an asset. That's cool. Other people don't have that same background. So it becomes a, a positive, becomes an asset. Yeah, I'd, I'd add to that um, uh, because we talk about specialised, but mm. some people think that means, uh, oh, I'm only going to do this particular type of house. Uh, be careful not to yeah. go really minute uh, and uh, specialise in a, a, a wide subject in a sense. Yeah. So, And don't ignore things that are happening in that area mm. So uh, because some people worry about future-proofing themselves. So do watch out. So if scanned assets... Uh, are suddenly becoming uh, overtaking your particular area mm. then just uh, you've still got skills that are important so don't worry about that but just be aware of the industry um, it, as well and pick up other but you, you find this as you go along don't you uh, but uh, pick up other skills and don't ignore them but uh, you keep specializing and get very good at one thing and yeah. then you build up your other skills slowly and you become this sort of full package what was what was your first area of specialization grant what did you start off by saying i'm going to be really good at this i was very generalist so i was happy to do anything but it was probably a bit architectural because those were the um things that i were uh, that i was getting asked so um yeah so uh, I, the first big job i had was to do a 42 million pound yacht uh, and so I had to design the whole interior and uh, it was it was really tough actually wow. because I was fairly new and uh, the person who I was doing it for didn't know much about 3D so uh, oh, it, was, it was it was very uh, exciting frustrating stressful uh, but uh, learned a lot from it and that was back in the day this was 25 years no 20, 20 years ago so wow. Blender was it was like rendering this thing was like, oh man, it took <laughs> Anyway, you that's push, another story. Push the but... <laughs> button and come back next week. You're like, ah, oh, it was. I slightly did it, it the wrong it was... color. Ah, oh, do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Three three days for uh, a rendered animation and things. So it was it was oh dear killer, <laughs> but it was <laughs> it was great. Uh, and we've talked about this in other um, yeah, answers and things and questions. Uh, but it was a foot in the door and it was mm. getting paid to do something that, that I love to do. It wasn't great pay and it ended up because it took me longer than I was expecting. Uh, mm. It was quite low pay, but it was still, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't give up that opportunity and that experience for anything. It was so important. Yeah, you got to, you got to get your foot in the door and, you know, questions come up all the time. The difference between offering yourself for, for low price or for free versus being taken advantage of. And I think the whole difference there is whether it's on your terms or not. If someone's saying, oh, I can only afford to pay you, you know, $12.50 for, you know, these 100 hours of work, then you get the choice. You get to look at that and say, what else can I get out of this? What else can I get out of this opportunity? And have your negotiation based around that. You know, I need to this, that, that, you know, experience, portfolio, whatever it might be. Um, but being taken advantage of is when someone gets there and says, I'm going to pay you $100 
but then they halfway through they say, well, actually I need you to do five times as much for that hundred dollars. That's not cool. And that's when you should push back and say, we had an agreement, you've added to that, you're taking advantage of me. Maybe don't use those words, sounds a bit whiny, but you know, we had an agreement and if you wanna add more to it, then we need to, to readjust the price because you know, it needs to be fair. So don't let yourself get taken advantage of, but doing free or low paid work, I don't think is getting taken advantage of. I think it's, you know, you're kind of getting paid a little bit or, you know, sometimes it's free, but you're getting an education and you're getting experience and you're getting something on your resume and you're getting skills. So, you know, don't don't shy away from that. And don't, don't listen to the oldies out there who are like, oh, never do work for free because it breaks the industry. That's That's not true. Like, yes, there's people who are doing free work and there's people who are like, oh, I might've paid a little bit of money, but I can find some free people. But it, I don't personally don't think it breaks the industry because people with the money to pay, they don't want to go find the free person that's, you know, that they're not in that same conversation. They're in the, I'll pay proper money to do proper work because I want someone who's experienced. So I, yeah, but I don't know. Have you seen that? Have you seen people doing the whole, oh, when people bid really low or do it for free, it breaks it for everyone, ruins it for everyone. Yep, I, I see that a lot. And my brother is a photographer. And I think the photography industry suffers from this a lot because yeah. it's kind of, it's fairly quick to get the skills you need and fairly low cost to get the, um, the equipment you need to mm -hmm. become a photographer, to be a really good one. It's years and years of experience, but obviously uh, the more people that do it for nothing, for exposure, but that, yep. but you can see that all the time that people are saying, well, you'll get exposure from doing this event and you'll get, yep. and it's the exposure thing uh, that people are really frustrated about. But sometimes uh, if your industry is like that, you have to, you have to expect that that's going to happen, that people are going to just work for exposure because uh, they haven't quite got the skills yet. They need to learn and they want to uh, get some exposure for themselves. It's going to happen. We can't fight against that and get angry about it. We have to figure out how we can work with this mm. and put yourself above uh, those people who are expected to, um, who are just working for the exposure. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah. you, you can't blame the industry um, or uh, for um, the way it's developed and the way it's become. If people are willing to work for that, then there's a reason for that and you need to pitch yourself above that and away from it as yep. best you can, but don't get angry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's gotta be a joke in there about photographers and exposure, but I can't think of it at the moment. <laughs> Every time you said exposure, I'm like, are you talking about just photographers who are interested in exposure? <laughs> <laughs>